Hi, it's Bruce from Geoscience BC. Great to be back in Northern British Columbia, where we'll be flying the Search Phase 3 program this summer. Behind me, crews are making the aircraft ready for the survey. These booms that I've got my arms extended towards, they're gonna measure the magnetic signature of bedrock over 9,000 square kilometers. Come next year, we'll have a really neat new picture of the geology of the area that we're gonna be flying. Hopefully it's gonna be helpful to the exploration sector and the communities of Northern BC. We collect airborne geophysical data by mounting two high sensitivity magnetometers on the booms on this aircraft behind me. CGG collects the data by flying the helicopter at a certain altitude. In this case, it's 80 meters above the ground. This project itself is about 42,000 line kilometers. Putting everything in context, that's the distance around the Earth. The final but most important component is the data acquisition system, which assembles all of this information into a data stream for processing. We've seen in other parts of northern BC where we funded these types of geophysical surveys, it make a difference in the amount of investment and exploration activity. It's a mystery in terms of the survey about what really is out there in the, in the ground and what potential does it have. An ideal result is that there's more science and data and information out there around potential mineralization in that part of British Columbia that can then lead potential exploration companies to come in and invest dollars and explore. And maybe that results in a new mine being built and a major project that uh, supports a lot of wealth creating jobs in that part of BC. The survey will produce maps. We know that information produced from surveys like this serve a greater audience than might be apparent. Obviously explorers and prospectors will use the information for exploring for minerals. However, we do know that governments, First Nation governments, uh, regional governments, economic development officers will also use this information to gain a better idea as to what economic opportunities might be in the area. Also, when it comes to making crucial resource management decisions, decisions about where mining is appropriate or where protection is appropriate, this map actually shows where the search phase three project will occur you can see that it's actually a quite a remote part of British Columbia. And you can also see where phase one and phase two were flown over the last two years. The helicopters we're gonna use in the survey are equipped with very sensitive magnetometers. They're gonna pick up a mineral called magnetite, which is a key mineral in understanding mineral potential. This sample of magnetite will attract magnets like this. And that's essentially what these helicopters are gonna be doing in this survey. Areas of high magnetism will appear as red areas in the map. Areas of low magnetism will appear blue. The work really begins to start after the data is collected. The helicopters will leave and we will be begin processing the data using powerful computers, GIS systems, and interpreting the raw data into meaningful information. That process can take several months and it can lead to a final product that we hope to release sometime in early 2018.